So we will be discussing only classification algorithm. It's a purely classification algorithm, Neibayes, and Neibayes or Bayes theorem of conditional probability. So Neibayes is a purely classification algorithm and it uses Bayes theorem of conditional probability. So the Bayes theorem which it uses is this. The probability A given B has already occurred probability of A given B has already occurred is equal to probability of B given A has already occurred multiplied by probability of A divided by probability of. So the formula which typically we use for Bayes, uh, Bayes theorem of condition probability is probability of A given B has already occurred is equal to probability of B given A has already occurred multiplied by probability of A multiplied by probability of B. Now, if you look at this equation, probability of B given A has occurred posterior probability, posterior probability or simply probability of event evidence is seen. Probability of A is called prior probability or probability before evidence, probability before evidence. So this is what by a uh, statistician named Bias has proposed. This is a conditional probability where the probability is taken into consideration after the event has, an, has occurred. So that and also the prior probabilities will also be considered to, uh, to calculate the a, uh, a given B here given B has already occurred. So probability of A given B has already occurred is equal to probability of B given A has already occurred into probability of A divided by probability of B. Probability of B given A occurred is called posterior probability or prior probability of event after evidence is seen. Probability of A is called prior probability or probability before evidence. Any doubts guys? So the bias rule in machine learning where x is independent variable and y is so in machine learning typically we have we are calculating probability of y given x has already occurred probability of x given y has already occurred multiplied by probability of y divided by probability of so the same thing which we are implementing for a machine learning problem where we have x is independent variable, y is a dependent variable. Similarly here, probability of y given x, which is probability y occurring x has already. Similarly, probability of x given y, probability of x occurring y has already occurred. So probability of Y and probability of our prior probability or probability and X. So guys, any doubts? Shall we move forward? So the probability is what we is the fundamental here. The events of one event is dependent on other. Why we call it as conditional probability is because one event is dependent on the other events occurring. So that is why we call it as conditional probability. Name bias formula. This is for classifying any classification problem. You can do it. Multinomial or name bias formula for multiple independent variables and multiple independent variables. The formula is probability of y is equal to k x1, x2, x3 till xn is equal to probability of y is equal to k multiplied by probability of x2 given y is equal to probability of x3 given y is equal to l probability of xn given y is equal to multiplied by probability of y is equal to k divided by probability of x1 multiplied by probability of x2 multiplied by probability of x3 probability of xn so when you have multiple independent variables this is the 
formula that we use where y is the dependent variable, k is the number of or levels in dependent variable x1, x2, x3 till xn, we call them as independent. So this is the formula for multiple independent variables. If the Nibes, if you are dealing with multiple independent variables and multiple classes, this is the formula. So guys, any doubts? So one is, it is a very fast algorithm. It is useful in multinomial problems. It works with less strain data. If you have many categorical variables, it performs well in comparison to the numerical variables. So these are the reasons why we use Nibes algorithm. Whenever you have less training data, then this has a very good advantage and it is also useful in multinomial, more than two. More than two levels is also another reason why we use this. Email spam prediction, sentiment analysis, recommendation systems, basically multinomial problems. When you have data with more categorical variables, it is a Nibes algorithm. So when you have smaller data sets, then this is very advantageous. Less than 5,000. All right, can we move forward? Now there is a slight different process. You will understand once you do the calculation. The process is slightly different. So let us see one example. Say two dice are thrown simultaneously and the sum of the numbers is found to, what is the probability the number three has appeared so two dice are thrown simultaneously and the sum of the numbers obtained is found to be seven. What is the probability that the number three has appeared at least once? Now in this case, first we need to understand the sample space. Sample space, yes. So we have six events per dice, six events. So that means six into 36 events. So the sample size is 36 events. When I say six events means it can be one, two, three, four, five, six. If you do two times, six into six, 36 events. Now, if you are looking at event A, event A indicates the combination three has appeared. Event A indicates the combinations three has appeared. So A is equal to, if you are looking at the combinations, it can be three, one, it can be 3, 2, it can be 3, 3, it can be 3, 5. Similarly, it can be 1, 3, it can be 1, uh, sorry, 2, 3. So, event is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, if you are looking at probability of A, it will be 11 by 36. Event B, the combination so B is equal to 1, comma 6, 2, comma 5. 3 comma 4, 4 comma 3, 5 comma 2, 6 comma. So probability of event B is equal to 6 divided by 36. Intersection, so A intersection B is at least 1, 3 and sum is 7. So what are those two things? These are the two things. 3, 4, 4, 3. Probability of A intersection B. So probability of A given B has already occurred is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B, which is 2 by 36 divided by 6 by 36, which will give you 1 by 3 as the output. So the probability is 1 by 3. This is a simple example. All right, guys, got it, guys. Can you move forward? Types of naive bias, Bernoulli naive bias, if majority multinomial Gaussian Nibes majority of independent numeric. So these are the three types of Nibes we have. All right, shall we continue? Now all of you open the calculation sheet which I have already emailed you. So in this case, the dependent variable is stolen and independent variables are color and origin. So find the probability of the car stolen if the color is yellow type is SUV, domestic is, origin is domestic. What is the probability or what is the, whether the car will be stolen or not? This is the question. Now we have to create cross tabulations, stolen, yes, no, red and no, one, yellow and no, one, two, three. Similarly, yes and no, 
and SUV. Sports and stolen, one, two. Sports and not stolen, SUV and stolen, SUV and not stolen, one, two, three. Similarly, we have to create cross tabulation for and import it. Domestic, yes, one, two, two domestic, yes. Domestic, no, one, two, three. Imported, no. So we have to create these tabulations from the data. So it will create these tabulations from the data. All right, guys, can we move forward? So to answer the above question, to answer this question of whether the car will be stolen if it is yellow, SUV, and domestic, we have to calculate two probabilities. We have to calculate two probabilities. The two probabilities are this. Probability of yes, given it is yellow, SUV, and domestic. Probability of no, given yellow, SUV, and domestic. So these two probabilities have to be calculated. Whichever probability is higher, that will be the answer, yes or no. So probability of yes, given yellow, SUV, domestic. Probability of no, given yellow, SUV, and domestic. Whichever is higher will be the final probability. So first we will find out probability of S given LO, SUV and domestic. All right, shall we start the calculations? All right, guys, can we move forward? So probability of LO and S, two divided by five. Probability of SUV and yes. Probability of domestic and yes. So likelihood of evidence is 0 0.4 into 0 0.2 into 0 0.4. Prior probability of S is five by 10. So LO and S is 2 by 5, SUV and S is 1 by 5, domestic X is 2 by 5. Multiplication of all these three is likelihood of evidence. So for your reference, I'll write it here 2 by 5. Multiplication of all these three is this. So these are the calculations that are involved. So once can you explain P of S or P of 9 and P of S and P of 9? So there are 5 S and 5 no's, right? If you look at the dependent variable, 5 S and 5 no's are there. Total sample size is 10. 5 by 10, 5 by 10. Uh, in the formula, we are dividing with P of X now. So, where actually we are dividing in calculation. See, the denominator is common, right, for the calculation. In the Sorry, sir. I didn't. Denominator is common for both the calculations, right? The denominator is common. See, the denominator for this is probability, probability of SUV, probability of domestic, right? As per yeah. The the denominator for this is probability of LO multiplied by probability of SUV multiplied by probability of domestic. Okay. This also same, no? probability of LO, probability of SUV, probability of domestic. Same denominator. No, P of X, we didn't calculate P of X. Why P of X. See, when you, when you, the denominators are same, the denominator is probability of X1 into probability of X2 into probability of X3. X, yes. X3, right? Uh, this is also probability of X1, X2, X3. Okay, right. values will be same, so no need of divide. Uh, denominator is same, then why do you need to calculate it? Okay, got it. Denominator rule, no? If the denominators are common for two equation, two ratios, we need not, we need not go, go calculate them, we'll go with the numerator. 